Yeah, baby. Dude, I love the sound of that thing. What are you thinking about that? Eh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Dude, I could, I could go run 20 miles right now, just looping that over and over again. I guess it's just kind of like the, the coffee noise is... I mean, I, I like coffee myself, but I mean, I don't, I don't really get the, the coffee blend. What are you talking about? At the beginning, or is it like filling up the? Oh, oh, the mug. Yeah, no, is that technically that was water? Oh, I mean, water makes a lot more sense, I guess. Yeah, I'm not a big coffee drinker. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. Either way, <laughs> we're here, guys. This is Studio M Podcast Regular Edition. Uh, I am Manly Matt Morris, your host, joined in the studio by Kev, until we come up with something better or different, TRD, The Real Deal. He kind of likes it, he kind of doesn't like it. Yeah, so The Real Deal has always been my nickname, but you know, it's kind of too long for a radio name, so it's kind of okay. stuck there. And That's TRD what... is just a little bit weird. I, I mean, it sort of works. I mean, I guess it works, as long as you know it's for The Real Deal, you know, especially being like The Real Deal Seal. It flows. Yeah, his last name's Seal. So that, you got that, what, in high school? Yeah. Coach Coach is calling you that? Yeah, he said it was like the seal of approval, <laughs> more more so than the animal. Right. TRD. Get it rock and roll, you know? I mean, I've been rolling with it for years, so. Yeah. So we were supposed to have another co-host here. Supposed to have Foxy T. She decided to go to the lake instead. She ditched us. We're going to have to make her pay. But for now, we're going to lock it down. First episode without her. So either way, why don't you tell them what's going down with you? What we brought you on the show? What what were we thinking for the future? I guess I'm going to kind of like the resident married guy. Yeah. Um, so any kind of questions with that? I basically have been married since I was, since I was born, I guess. Technically. He's, his entire... Puberty on life. He's been dating and now married to like one girl. Yeah, I was never really in the game, so. Yeah. If you had to ask him for a pickup line, he would be useless. The most useless guy I know for the game. But if you if you lock him down when you're like 13 or whatever for life, I guess you don't need any game. Exactly. My game was, it was more of a maintenance game. Yeah, he went he went the other route. <laughs> he went the other route. He said, well... Is like she has nothing, you know. I just, I just get her before she even has a has a choice for anyone else. It's like just locked her down. Yeah, I just got lucky that she developed into a hot doctor. Yeah, yeah. Kevin is, he's he's pretty much set. And we tried. To, I tried to convince her earlier. I tried to convince her to to come and fill in for Foxy T. Uh, she's she's going the whole medical route. She's got some seriously gross to the regular to regular people. These are really gross stories. But Kev being in like sort of the medical, physical therapy, therapy thing too, they, these are normal stories to them. They don't understand when you start talking about like someone having stuff like blown out of them and things like. Yeah, I mean, I've just been around it forever. Like I, I have a sort of medical-ish degree yeah. and my wife, you know, being mostly a doctor, she's still got a couple of years in school. It's just a little... uh some of the stuff that's commonplace is not common to everyone. Yeah, like okay, like, let me put this in perspective, okay? Let's say I like I go over there and we're talking about like medical stuff. I remember saying like, "Oh, I haven't I need to have a physical." And she's like, "Well, I can just do it." I was like, "How many of y'all have had your friend's wife just be like, "Oh, why don't you just Oh, if you just drop your pants, I can just do it right here. It's no big deal." Like to them that's no big deal. To me that's really out of the ordinary. I didn't do it, by the way. Yeah, I mean... Felt like that would be awkward. Medically speaking, it is no big deal, because it's, like, not invasive, but whatever. I, I mean, mean, I yeah, it's definitely... I can tell you that. It would have definitely been non-invasive. I guess if you think... <laughs> I prefer all my physicals to be as non-invasive as possible. I guess if personally. you think that... I mean, either way you look at it, there's nuts in your face. I mean, yeah. but eh. That's what I'm dealing with, people. That's that's what I'm talking about. It's like they're, what's normal to them medically is not normal to the rest of the people. And I think it'd be a good story, but she was a little scared of the mic. So we're going we're gonna to work with it. We're going to get her on here, though, I can tell. So you can have her come tell like a gross 
f- crazy medical story of the week, something like that. I think it would be good. I think it would add value. Yeah, and it'd be some insight to like a kind of closed door type profession. Yeah, I mean, sort of you hear the behind the scenes type of thing. So, um, so yeah, so Kev's going to be our our sort of uh, we our go to guy. You want to know you want to know what it's like to be married because even though he's only been married a few years, it's more like he's been married like ten years. Because or he's, more actually. Yeah, he's been like holding down a like a real relationship for that period of time. Let's see, I've been in a relationship since I was with the same girl. Since I was 14, and I'm 26 now. Yeah. So married for two years, it together for 14. Yeah. Is that right? That's crazy. 12. 12 years. Yeah. So, and, and he's got a kid, so kid questions go as well. And, I mean, pers- I don't have a kid. I'm not married. I don't have a kid. And, oh, my gosh, am I thankful for that. Because, like, if you're if you're medically minded like them, like, having a giant pile of crap flying at you, I guess that's normal. No big deal. Get a little on you. Just roll with it. To me, I mean, that's terrifying. So I'm not ready for that at all. There's no way to prepare yourself for the sheer amount of crap that can come out of such a small animal or person. (laughs) Sometimes he's like an animal. It's like an animal. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't... When you you, you get a newborn baby, they don't... They don't. They don't crap for like a couple of weeks, right? Something no, they crap immediately, but it's like tar. No, yeah, it's the black tar. Tell them what. Explain the black tar crap. Most people aren't don't know this. When you have a baby, the first thing you have to deal with is like black tar. It's basically, like have you ever dealt with JB Weld? Yeah. You mix the two things together, and it immediate it hardens after a while. It's pretty much the same thing. I think there's some sort of mixing internally, and they just they just crap out JB Weld. See, I thought it was they didn't crap for like a week or they didn't poop for like a week. And then when they finally did, it comes out like like alien, no, the first like some thing, unholy First thing my kid tar. did when he was born was crap. Immediately. Straight out? Straight out of crap. Instantly. And dude, but it like, doesn't smell. It's like nature knows yeah, right. you, need, you need to be prepared. It's like as you feel like you can master one aspect of having a kid, they get more difficult. And then you keep improving as they are getting more difficult. So if so crap level one, if if first crap is like crap level one, and then a week later its body steps it up, now it's crap level four. Right. And you know, it's not very much crap to begin with. And it like I said, it does not stink. So you're like, I can handle this. Little do you know what is awaiting months down the road. Yeah, have you have you, you've had you've had projectile crap coming right at you, right? Uh, no, but we've had crap work its way around and almost come out the front of the diaper. It was God. so full. God, dude, I, I can't even. I imagine. mean, I took I took pictures <laughs> just so I could show him when he was older. <laughs> this is blackmail stuff. I hear more and more about about parents doing that. They're taking pictures, like because I mean, we we're the first sort of generation that has like you have a digital camera with you at all times. So I don't have pictures like that for me as a child, but. Your baby's going to grow up. He's going to be. He's going to have a million photos of himself. He could relive his entire life if he wanted to. I mean, it's a it's every good crap. And bad. He could relive every crap he ever took. Our generation was lucky, I guess. That I mean, not lucky in the sense that you maybe forgot a lot of stuff, but lucky in the sense that there's hardly any dirt that you can be dug up on us. Right. Our parents have no dirt. Right. I got nothing. You like what you go through a family photo album, you might find like ten photos of them. It's as basically a kid. like everyone was in the witness protection program in the eighties and and before that. Yeah. So, so he's he's uh, how old is he now? He's uh almost when? sixteen months. So you I'll start going right months whenever you have a kid too. I mean, it's kind of stupid, yeah, but they they develop so often that it. Between one year and two year, you really got to say it because it's a huge difference. So, so tell me this. I have another friend that's got a kid, and we were talking. I went over there and visited him, and one of the first stories I hear is that I'm talking about. I was like, dude, like they just they just go to the bathroom on the floor. Like if you don't have a diaper on them, like for five minutes, first thing they want to do is start just blasting everywhere. Oh yeah, um, I actually recently built my first computer, and I had the parts kind of out in the living room. He runs out from the bathroom naked and like is standing on the tower to the computer <laughs> and just pees inches from it. I mean, this is like an expensive gaming computer. Like, Yeah, you spent a lot of money on this thing. 
And the dude just doesn't care. Babies just, they're basically like honey badger. <laughs> yeah. They just don't care. They don't and care. then he ran and laughed and then immediately squatted and took a dump. I mean, who does that? So he takes, so, well, that's, that's leading to my story. Okay. So my friend's kid, they, he starts, he starts running around like he's scared or something like that. And they start trying to figure out what he's scared of. He runs, he's like pointing into the corner, pointing into the corner of the, of the room. And they go over there. The kid's taking a dump in the corner of the room and he's literally scared of his own crap. Right? Like he's terrified. So he's, cause he's never seen it come out before as a kid. Every time you get the feeling to go to the bathroom, he goes in the diaper and then someone takes it away. You never actually knew what, what was it go, what was going on. So he was running around naked, takes a dump and turns around to see something like terrifying on the floor and runs away from it. I mean, can you I imagine mean, being terrified of your own crap? You know, as, <laughs> as crazy as it is, as it sounds, I actually could imagine that. Cause I, think about this. Think it's about like, how terrifying that would be. You, like you saw, like it wasn't there before. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing, and then you look back, and there's this nasty, like vile slug that's just staring back at you from nowhere. You don't want to touch it because I mean, crap, this it's crap. What's it seems? It, I, I, there must be something built into our brains that you know what that is because a kid will touch anything, right? Anything at all that's. They're wanting to go put it in their mouth and stuff. Yet it knows it sees that crap. It's like, I don't want to go anywhere near that thing. You got to run. You turn and run. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I would I would hope that's built in. We haven't experienced anything like that. But I've heard some stories like through the grapevine. Nothing specific, but like babies with crap, like painting on walls and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just pray that never happens. Mm-hmm. Gosh. So at the same time, we've got a baby that's scared of his own crap. Yet I get over there and they have taught this kid sign language. His wife does sign language professionally and they can make him go through his ABCs. They can basically, they can fully communicate with him. And I'm watching him do this. And I know a little sign language because my mom did some of that with me as a kid. But I'm watching a kid that's scared of his own crap that yet knows something that I don't. Do you know how, like, like how absolute, like, like, just takes you down a whole notch. You realize the level that that you're at compared to this kid. Yeah, you know, it's in a year and a half. This kid has learned something in the world that you've had all these years to learn, and at the same time, he's terrified of his own dump. Well, look at it this way. I mean, it's sign language. I mean, if you're not deaf, it's kind of pointless. Well, I mean, it helps out like at a distance because you maybe you're in a group. Or something like as a kid when they can't communicate very well, you know they kind of mumble. As an adult, you you can put the sign and the mumble together into a. As an adult, if I if I can't hear anyone or see someone, I would just walk over there to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I wouldn't feel so bad. I felt pretty bad actually at that moment. Whenever when those two stories hit me at once, yeah, it took me back a sec for a second. I I mean, if they were signing out like a whole Christina Aguilera song, then yeah, I'd feel pretty bad. I felt like. It, I mean, it, that there's no, nothing he should have been able to learn in a year and a half that I shouldn't already know. You know what I mean? That's how I felt. Yeah, I can see that. Let's move on. What else we got going on in the world? We got freaking USA moving on in the World Cup. What? What? Yeah, yay. Taking it to them. You yeah, know. no one expected that, but Portugal, I mean, they suck. That's pretty much as blunt as I can put it. Yeah. yeah they're terrible. I, I mean... We went in there, and everything went according to plan. We didn't need to beat Germany, so we didn't beat Germany. We didn't want to wear our starters out. We didn't want to, you know, got all that we knew. All, we got to be fresh for the final, so we're trying to keep everyone. And I just want to say, I think Germany was thinking the same thing because I saw that they changed some of their starting lineup. They had some of the kind of the old school ballers out there. Who yeah. I mean, yeah, they're good, but they're not like they're not starters anymore. Well, it it was kind of a good game. I mean, there was no way that they that it wasn't going to go both of our ways. Because and speaking of that, they had Schweinsteiger out there, and uh, I have a friend in Germany, and um, just just take a guess what that, that name would translate to literally. Schweinsteiger, Schweinsteiger. I don't know. What is it? What does it mean? I mean, because I I know a little bit of German myself, so I was like texting him. You know, like I know Schwein means pig. And I was like, what is, 
Steiger mean? And he was like, well, Steigen means to climb. So literally this guy's last name is Pig Climber. And we got beat by a guy, Sebastian, I think is his name. Pig Climber. <laughs> Apparently Why? the guy's a is Pig the, Climber. That's, that's the literal translation? Literal. Can you imagine like... So his parents knew this. They had to have known that that's what the translation was. I mean, it's his last name, so he can't change it. Oh, yeah. I think his first name is Sebastian or something, maybe. I can't remember. That's like that, what is it? Is it Japanese or something where that, their name, like always, it's like meandering brook. You know, they they have those specific, I mean, you just like, no, it's like an Indian name, you know, like their actual name was like, like Swift Breeze. Yeah. You just don't get that in the, in so the they, American instead of, culture. So instead of that, instead of something gangster like that, like Red Sand and Horse Master, they got Pig Climber. <laughs> I mean, you got to think somewhere down the line that someone in their family literally was a pig climber, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's like a rough translation, like they're a pig rider. Either way, I mean, who rides pigs? I didn't know you could ride a pig. Pig herder, I mean, I guess, if you have wild pigs. I don't know. The guy's decent, though. So, so Germany thought they won the game, but really we won the game because we played to the exact minimum we needed so we kept everyone as fresh as possible and we took it to them and only let them score one goal which is exactly what we needed to do so i mean i guess that's one way to look at it that's that's definitely the way to look at it that's that's the more because we're gonna win way to look at it well because we're gonna win right and if we're gonna win we got to keep everyone fresh that's the unsung story of of the world cup you don't realize how you try to play 90 minutes running like that you're getting beat up these are world cup rules i mean this is World Cup level soccer. They're letting you like slide tackle people to to no end. Like you're getting beat up hardcore. You know you see these guys with uh, getting pulled muscles and getting bruised up. You got to survive until the end of the what tournament. Was, what was crazy in that game is um, we actually had two people on our own team collide with each other, and uh, one of them has a broken nose because of it. Yeah. Can you imagine hitting your own teammate and breaking your nose? I mean, if at least if you're going to hit someone, hit the other team and like cause some damage to them yeah man world cup's crazy though when's our next game when's u.s play again uh u.s will be playing again on tuesday at 3 p.m central time so 3 p.m man we're gonna have to stream that yeah i mean i'm definitely gonna be watching it at work and uh basically not doing anything else (laughs) did 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 everyone go down and like take an extended lunch to watch that that our last game i did i um i skipped a lunch before so i could take a longer lunch and went to wings and more oh, okay i wondered where everyone went but uh there was a guy that actually brought a little mini projector and shot it onto the wall it's pretty sweet oh idea. really yeah dang he's thinking about doing it for the next game too so check so that yeah out. everyone everyone tune in even if you're not a soccer player you know this is important when you know support your country you know we got we got it. This important game. We made it out of the first rounds. A ton of teams don't even make it into the World Cup. And honestly, there's nothing else going on right now anyway, except for like maybe baseball. And who watches that? Yeah, I mean that's a fun sport to go to. I don't know about watching on TV though. Eh, I support, uh, but I support all sports though. You know, I, I have the ones that I that are my preference. But you know, even soccer is not one of my favorite ones to watch, even though like I've played it my whole life. I'm a pretty big hater on baseball, if I'm going to be honest. Like, I mean, come on. You got freaking 40-year-old guys who are severely overweight still playing the game professionally? Work yeah, as a world-class athlete right there. What other sport has that? And don't give me some sport like cricket. I want an actual <laughs> sport. Oh, uh, uh, man. Well, you can be... I mean... You can still have a huge body fat percentage and be a professional football player, but you're only going to be like a lineman. Right. You have to be, and you have to just be a physical But you're beast. still, you're still an athlete. There's an athlete underneath all that fat. They just have to have the weight to even play that position. Right. Otherwise they get pushed around. Yeah. And football, I mean, positions are so specific. That's one thing that makes soccer such a great sport is because, I mean, yeah, you have people who are better at other positions, but they get moved around all the time. You have to be able to transition. Yeah. And not be completely defined to one role. Like football, you have a lineman who you would absolutely never put at receiver. Soccer, yeah. your defender, he's probably not going to have a great shot. But, I mean, if you had to, you could put him at, as a striker. Yeah. Dude, I got my new soccer shorts on right now, man. 
I go mad bright colors on this stuff. Got it's like the blue and the gold. I got bright gold shorts. It's intimidating to the other team when you see the other team come out there and they're warming up, and you see the one guy that's decked out, looking super gangster with this bright colors. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to tell me. I In got- soccer, you know what I mean. Everything's bright colors, and they look at you and they know they know it's coming to them. They know they'd be I scared. Got, I have my whole team wearing neon green socks. I mean, we know where it's at. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm when they I mean, see that type of color coordination. They know it's on. Right. Like I have the neon yellow shoes with neon lime socks. That clash, just all it, all it is is intimidation. Dude, absolutely. I can tell you the one thing about this kind of odd about freaking soccer shorts is like, I don't know why the material has got to be so thin. I mean, you're pretty much running around naked in these things. I don't know about you. Because if you're a thin guy, if you're not, if you don't have a huge gut to like hold your shorts like a foot off of your body. You might as well just be wearing well, underwear out there. I mean, what do you look for in a soccer short? You look for some freedom of leg movement, right? I guess. And truly naked is freedom. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you have to contain the beast, though. That's what underwear is for. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, why am I wearing shorts if if they're serving the same purpose as, as, uh, as just underwear? I'll tell you why. Because underwear doesn't come in bright colors. I mean, maybe that would be a good business. Just dual purpose it. I mean, if you put some of those crazy Isn't checkers. like a swimsuit? Some crazy checkers on some underwear. I'm sure you'd have people come out and wear underwear out there. <laughs> I mean, MMA is already doing it. Oh, you, yeah, you said you had to switch underwear, actually. Didn't you? I did, yeah. Recently, I just want to go ahead and hate on Fruit of the Loom. They suck because. Dude, I um, gave up on that a long time ago. Yeah, I was an FTL man. Dude. This company guy, you know, fanboy, FTL right. fanboy. Fanboy, yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, that's like what you start with. Yeah, I just randomly grabbed those, and they, they said they would give me seven for the price of five, and Haynes only gave me six at the time. Therefore, you're now a company man. So I was loom. immediately a fan of Fruit of the Loom because it's like the same company. Yeah. It's the same thing. I wear, for guys, unlike girls' underwear, we're not – I mean, you might be brand-specific, but we're brand-specific based on, like, price alone Yeah, because it's all the same thing. And I learned real quick that boxer briefs are like, that's basically like the manliest type of underwear anyone could ever wear. Yeah, that's what you want to step up to when you're ready. If we got any young guys listening, I don't know, you're kind of in high school, someone's trying to lead you down the boxer, uh, the, the, where the boxers are Stay route. away. Don't do that. Cause don't I, do it. We're talking, remember we talking about the medical thing that Kevin them got going on? His, his woman can tell you she has to do these physicals all the time, and she says that you can absolutely tell the difference when a man comes in there, he's old. Between the dudes that wore the boxers, yeah, right? I'll tell and you the right dudes now. That didn't. Uh, for all of our ladies out there, um, we had a lot of them. You you wear a bra for a reason. It's to support your chest, yeah, so you don't get that African. Yeah, tit look. there's gravity. There's gravity at work here. You got to defeat gravity, or it's going to show. It's exactly the same in the nether region. Yeah, imagine I mean, imagine stretching out like a rubber band. Uh, a maximum for like 80 years it's eventually not going to go back right yeah it's the same thing just yeah so either way you want to go boxer brief (laughs) so you get the support and you get the non-tightness in the legs and they look cool they look look sexy i mean michael jordan wears them come on he does yeah how do you know that uh huge haynes commercial guy i mean but he doesn't but you don't know that's what he actually wears he's paying him the commercial I mean, if he wears it in the commercial, it's got to be true. Oh, I forgot. Is that how it works? I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> Quit shutting down my dreams. <laughs> I mean, so either way, I'm a Hanes guy now because recently Fruit of the Loom, I got pretty amped about it because they had it on their package that now they have boxer briefs that don't ride up your leg, which is a problem. Yeah, because you see it. You get them on and they, they kind of go down your leg and you feel like, all right, I'm not wearing like chick underwear. Got some leg here. But this first step you take, it, it like sucks up half, yeah, you, halfway up your leg. You pull your pants up and they just roll up. Yeah. And so you just have ex- this, uh, too much material. It's annoying. Right. So I was pretty excited about that. I put them on and like, yeah, I was like, this is legit. The legs are actually like fit well enough to where they won't ride up. But then the time I had to squat down, probably picking up my kid or something. It's like the flap, the, the P flap. The P flap. It's, the technical term is P flap. I mean, P flap technology is what. Call it what you want, but flap technology, man. Yeah, whoever invented that's got to be a millionaire. I mean, 
it just spreads wide open like a freaking goldfish mouth. <laughs> and then, like, what do you know? Like, wardrobe malfunction just... <laughs> It just lets everything out. And then when I stand back up, it just pinches it so it can't go back. <laughs> I mean, so then it's like, what am I supposed to do? Like constantly adjust myself? It's got a built-in guillotine, man. It's like a cigarette. It's like a cigar uh, chopper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the, the most accurate way to describe it is a cigar chopper. Yeah. I, I don't even know. What, do you know what that's actually called? Officially, I'm not a cigar person. I'm sure there's a technical term for that. If you know the name of that, hit us up on Twitter. It's a cutter. Cigar cutter. Cigar cutter, is that just it? Yeah, I think so. I, I bet there's some super technical name for it, though. Either way, imagine that's what the P-flap was like. Yeah, so those. you basically want to know is that you don't want one of those in your pants. Yeah, so I had to go today and um, actually go buy some Hanes boxer briefs because uh, their P-flap technology is superior. They're on P-flap 2.0. And uh, Fruit of the Loom is still on 1.0. I mean, why if why you got to change if you change the legs? Why you got to change the P flap? There was nothing wrong with that area. <laughs> so they lost a customer. I'm telling you right now. And I'm gonna send so them the a, reason to I'm, switch. I'm gonna send them an email. So the reason to switch is because it doesn't have a cigar cutter. Yeah, I'm wearing them right near, now. Anywhere near your package, and they don't ride up. I'm wearing them right now, sitting down, and my package is secure. Are they got cotton? Are they like got that? spandex rayon mix in there a little because i like that i really couldn't tell you <clears throat> i have no idea it's an underwear do i tell you what i tell you what dude there's this other underwear i saw it on dragon's den or uh shark i think it was dragon's den or shark tank they're, they're both the same show you know it's called sax sax underwear s-a-x-x it's a pretty cool name right they've got this it's it's brand new this is the only after you had regular men's underwear then you had flap technology and now you have like sail flap technology like it isolates it it isolates your stuff right isolates the package so that it can't touch your leg right it's like a compartment thing i could get behind that you know because occasionally going back to like we were saying i wore boxers for a while so it's kind of like a it's kind of like a sheet in the wind occasionally oh if if you say when it gets hot especially you know when i sit down I have the leather seats that get even hotter. Oh man. Yeah, you need you need sail flap technology, right? So this stuff came yeah. out. I saw it on TV and I was thinking about getting it, talked to a friend about it. He actually got some and he says it's the best thing in the world. It's like, dude, it's like nothing else you've ever had on. The only problem is they're stupid expensive, like thirty, thirty five bucks a, a I pair. mean, if I go to fart, I don't want it to, to just like I don't want any possibility that it, my, my sack is gonna be like a piece of bubble gum, like blowing a bubble. <laughs> no, that's definitely never happened to me. Oh, me either. I'm just, I'm just saying. All oh, right, of course. Yeah. So either way, so yeah, flaps. And apparently, the best thing about it is like he's like, dude, it like it like isolates your stuff. Like you walk around, it's it's like aerodynamic. <laughs> it's incredible. Like, you can't miss it. So it's like Lamborghini underwear. Yeah, Lamborghini underwear. Like it's it's there, right? If you got if you got confidence. You want to go around impress some people. This is what you want to be rocking. I've been thinking about getting some myself just to be hilarious. Yeah, I mean, just to wear in the locker room, just so everyone else knows that they need to respect you before they even meet you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you're if you're thinking about some, we're, we're throwing out useful knowledge here. So is there a what else? Is there anything else going on going to town? Yeah, we're. I'm sure I already mentioned it in the other episode, but we're in College Station, Texas. That's Aggie football. That's if you don't have any, if you don't know anything else, that's where Johnny Manziel is from. Everyone kind of probably knows that now. But yeah. So biggest thing going on in town. We got freaking Kyle Field blowing up. Kyle Field. Literally, it's blow. I mean, it's, they're blow. They've been blowing stuff up. They're out. blowing stuff up and just taking it out and redoing it. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up here. The stadium was old, and they they built the zone, and now they're basically it's like completely piecemealed together. But it's going to be huge. It's going to be like over a hundred and two thousand seats or something like that. Every day I drive home, I can see there's like enormous cranes, stuff out there. I mean, it's going to be like half concrete, half steel, crazy facades. And I mean, they tore down the old volleyball stadium for it. That's what killed me. Yeah, where I had literally all of my classes. Yeah. They're just gone now. Yeah, all for football. But we, you know, we support Aggie football, but you know, you could have left the stadium there. I, I mean, my classrooms were crappy. I'm not trying to defend them. They needed to be gone. Yeah, I mean, I, w- I had a couple in there. I had a couple in Reed, but... It was a maze. 
it's going to be fun. We're looking forward to football season. Like we said before, when that rolls around, we're going to be doing some serious student athlete interviews and getting some some people that are well known on here to uh, get some interesting stuff. So, otherwise, man, uh, otherwise, I think that's that's pretty good. Pretty good first episode. Don't need to go any farther. Save some of the other good topics for another time. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to give y'all everything in one go. Yeah, I mean, you know, we respect some of y'all. Don't want to listen to always have an hour show. We did a little, you know, half hour action for you here. So if you have any questions, any comments, suggestions, if you happen to be really cool and think you'd want to be on the show, no guarantees. But if you've got something like a, something really good, you know, hit us up on Twitter. That's at Studio M Podcast. Uh, Facebook, same thing. Facebook slash Studio M Podcast. Our website's the exact same thing. StudioMPodcast.com. And yeah, we're rolling. We're going full speed. I mean, next weekend is, uh, that's 4th of July. So some of us are gone. I might try to get some people together maybe during the week and to do a real quick set before that so that uh, we can get back at y'all. But I think that's it. You know, roll the credits. Yeah, let's roll them. (laughs) 